Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Pharmacypedia. In this video, we are going to discuss further about the emollients which are one of the building blocks of cosmetics. Emollients are used in wide number of product, wide range of cosmet cosmetics and cosmeceuticals. So what are emollients? Emollients are basically the substances which helps to soften the skin. They are actually derived from the word mollire, which is in Latin verb means to soften out. So they are basically incorporated into wide range of cosmetic product to soften the skin and to soften the hairs. They, uh, they simply eases out the skin. They simply eases out the hair so that the uh, all the uh, you get a very good skin feeling. Emollients are a class of ingredients with a wide variety of molecular structures. So they are typically non-polar material and come from both natural and synthetic sources. So they are widely used in number of creams, number of moisturizers, vanishing creams, apart from that various types of the synthetic soaps material and, and they have large number of applications. Emollients are considered to be functional ingredients. So let us try. Uh, try to understand the functions of emollients. Emollients are basically the moisturizing treatments which are directly applied to the skin to smooth and hydrate it. So emollients as the term indicates they soften on the skin, they hydrate it better, hydrate it better and they actually works out on three principles. They act as a humectant so they increases the moisturization level, they increases the skin's capacity to hold more water Second, they act as a lubricant, which means it they reduces out the friction when anything rubs against the skin. And third, they act as an occluder. So they put up a layer of an oil on the surface skin, which slows down the water loss, evaporation uh, from the skin surface is being reduced. So the three functions are very important, humectant, lubricant and occluder. Apart from that, they are used for the treatment of skin disease such as eczema which is a long-term chronic skin condition that causes the skin to become reddened, dry, itchy and cracked. And they are also used for the treatment of psoriasis, which is again a chronic non-infection skin condition that causes redness, flaky patches of the skin. So now you are clear about what are, what, are, what are emollients, what are the functions of emollients. Next, next let us try to classify the emollients on the basis of two categories first on the basis of their sources whether they belong to natural sources then they are termed as a natural emollients and when they are being synthesized in the lab synthetic emollients so first let us try to understand the natural emollients we get uh, emollients from two basic sources first in the form of the triglycerides from both plants and animals so triglycerides triglycerides are basically the fatty components of the plant as well as of the animals the examples of plant fatty acids are coconut oil soybean oil and palm oil since they are uh, produced by the plant sources they have they are very highly greasy since they have the oil all the oil properties they are non polar highly greasy and they are, act, uh, are working as an emollient in various herbal sort of the preparations. Next, from the animal sources also, we get large number of emollients like shark liver oil, mink oil. So they are again have the greasy property utilized in wide range of the cosmeceuticals. Then again from the animal sources, we get another type of special um, emollient known as the lanolin, which is derived basically from the sheep's food. So again, it is a sebum-like structure, like uh, we get on the sebum-like structure on the hairs and is a byproduct of the wool production industries. So natural emo emollient basically comprises of lanolin and triglycerides, both from plant and animal sources. These natural emollients are widely found in natural herbal cosmetic preparations. Then next we move on to the synthetic emollients. As the term describes them synthetic, they are synthesized in the labs. They are emollients are basically esters produced after the combination of alcohols and acids. So uh, they are further classified into three categories depending on the complexities. First is the simple esters. Then second complex esters and third is the polyhydric alcohols. So as the term indicates simple esters, it is a simple combination of acid and alcohol that results in the formation of isopropyl myristate. So complex esters have the, uh, the chain is actually enlarged. The acidic chain, the alcoholic chain is enlarged. So you get the emollients like dioctyl sebacate or dioctyl malleate. 
polyhydric alcohols again they have the large complex molecules like they produces the emollients like ethylene glycol monosterates or peg polyethylene glycol uh, series like peg 150 diesterates these these are the examples of the polyhydric alcohol so depending on the complexities of the acid depending on the complexities of the alcohol you get different types of the emollients different uh, molecular structures of emollients can be synthesized in the lab next we we'll let us try to explore the examples of the emollients which are present in the large number of cosmetic preparations that is why they are known as the building blocks building blocks as the term indicate they are widely used and have a wide applications into different types of the creams like vanishing cream moisturizing cream they increases the hydration level they uh, reduce the water loss from the skin for example different types of the butter sources like shea butter cocoa butter mineral oils lanolin petrolatum jellies paraffin beeswax squalene all of these types of the emollients are present in the commercial uh, type of the emollients like then ag again the oils different kinds of the oils like coconut oil jojoba oil sesame oil almond oil other plant oils apart from that various alcohols like cetyl alcohol olive oil widely used in different sorts of the uh, moisturizing creams and triethyl hexanoin so these are examples of the different kinds of the emollients being derived from the plant sources animal sources and other synthetic sources and which are widely used in the commercial preparations of creams next uh, emollients can also be classified uh, like uh, whether they are medicated or non medicated medicated as the term indicate they offer an exclusive barrier and they smooth the flaky skin cells to make the skin looks more smoother so they soften out like severe skin conditions like psoriasis and eczema some spread more easily than others esters and oils are both used in non medicated type of the topical emollients they are normally known as the moisturizers so they actually contain the occlusive agents like fat soluble emollients and humectant which increases the hydration level in the skin so again they can be classified uh, on the basis of their sources and on the basis whether they are medicated or not medicated next let us try to understand the few chemicals which have been screened out as occlusive emollients and humectants emollients like i have discussed natural oils ceramides fatty acids squalene humectants basically increases the hydration levels like glycerin aloe vera alpha hydroxy acids sorbitol sodium hyaluronate urea propylene glycol and other occlusive agents which forms the layer on the skin like mineral oil dimethicone paraffin lanolin shea cocoa mango butters beeswax most natural oils they found they form a uh, layer above the skin which prevents the water loss from the skin so uh, let us now after discussing the Uh, classification and discussing the different type of the emollients derived from the various sources and different types of the emollients being present in the different commercial preparation next we move on to the application part of the emollients since they are termed as the building blocks they are found in large number of cosmetic preparations so let us try to understand what sort of of the preparations they are comprised of for example the first is like they can be used as a soap substitute for example the emollient soap substitutes do not foam but are just as effective as cleaning the, as the soap is so soap substitutes can neither be applied before bathing showering or washing or while in the water examples are like paraffinum liquidum isopropyl myristate pgs glycerol cocoite next as i have discussed they are widely used in n number of the creams like moisturizing cream vanishing cream increasing the hydration level herbal sources or like synthetic sources for example this is this is just an example of the skin cream where white soft paraffin has been used as an active ingredient along with the liquid paraffin apart from the emollients large number of components are being used in the commercial creams The, uh, since this is one of the compo major component of the cream it has been highlighted as an active product next they are, are also widely used in lotions lotions are different from the creams that they are more watery so they contain more water and less fat as compared to the cream but are not very effective at moisturizing the skin however they are useful for hairy areas of the body so they can be applied uniformly all over the body body as a lotion you must have seen the difference between the creams and the lotion so they are more liquid they have the more hydration they have more water content so uh, but uh, when you compare the penetration across the skin creams are better at absorption 
so there are certain points that needs to be considered while uh, studying the emollients moisturizants and emollients are recommended for people with eczema and psoriasis at any age so they are highly useful for people having the sensitive skin since they cannot use the soap again and again the the sensitivity of the skin is more so when they use moisturizer and emollient their skin becomes better since they functions in three ways by forming an occlusive layer by reducing the water loss by increasing the hydration level etc aqueous creams or emulsifying ointments are good alternatives for hand and bath soaps because they do not strip the skin of its surface layer so the surface layer remains intact it is not being harmed as most soaps do and also they are useful for little children and babies uh, who are at the risk of developing the infected eczema so, since bath oils with an antiseptic may offer protection but these should be used occasionally now in certain cases bubble baths can also dry and irritate the skin so it is better to use emollients emollient bath additives or bath oils added to the bath water can prevent the loss of moisture from the skin now there are also certain side effects which have been associated with the overuse of the emollients like irritant reactions some skins are very sensitive skin so in that case there may happen that irritant reactions takes place or like folliculitis or like follicular facial rashes may develop due to the overuse of the emollients so i think i am clear about the uh, uh, emollients classifications of the emollients and the wide applications of the emollients please subscribe to my channel pharmacypedia also please provide your comment in the comment box thank you for watching my video